She sells seashells by the seashore. Red leather, yellow leather. Unique New York. She stood York, upon the balcony. Rubber baby bumper and bumper and bumper and bumper I am a mother pheasant plucker. I pluck mother pheasants. I'm the most pleasant mother pheasant plucker that ever plucked a mother pheasant. Okay, so we all know that tongue twisters are really fun and that they're fun because they're hard and they make you mess up. A box of biscuit. Biscuit box. Truly, really. <laughs> Proper coffee. Copper coffee pot. But why are they hard? Today, I'm going to walk you through why some tongue twisters are more difficult than others. So one of the things that we forget sometimes is that speech sounds are physical actions. Let's look at an ultrasound image of how many cans can a canner can if a canner can can cans? How many cans can a canner can if a canner can can cans? So here's a diagram of the inside of your vocal tract. This is called a mid-sagittal section, and it's going to let us show really clearly what some of these actions are. If we want to make a speech sound like a P, like a P, right? We're going to close the lips here. The air is coming up through the vocal tract, and it gets stopped, and then air pressure builds up until it explodes out in a p. You can feel that if you try it yourself. P. Try this. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. Try that three times fast. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mis mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. We've got these same two consonant sounds, but we keep swapping the order, right? Make a k sound. K. Here what's happening is that you're bringing the back of your tongue up to seal off the oral cavity right there at the roof of your mouth. So just like with p, right? The air is getting stopped, some pressure is building up, and then we're releasing it forward. K. If I were going to make a s sound, like a long s sound, I'm going to bring part of my tongue, usually for most of us anyway, it's going to be your tongue tip. I'm going to bring my tongue tip up towards this gum ridge here. Then the air is going to have to fight to get past this narrow little obstruction that I've made here. S and the sound is coming from the turbulence of the air trying to get past that obstruction. Now say the English word box. So the back of your tongue has to be up here for the k, and then it has to come down and the front part of the tongue has to come up real quick, has to flip up for this k box. It has to happen really fast, but so far so good. We do that all the time, no problem. Box on its own, no problem. Box, box, box. Biscuit on its own. No problem. Biscuit, biscuit, biscuit. We can do that all day long. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. We keep swapping the order. K, s, k, 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 That's what makes it hard. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixes, and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, biscuit box, a box of biscuits. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. So there's been some cool research into tongue twisters where they put people in brain imaging machines and had them do tongue twisters to try to study the way planning works in speech. And one of the things that they've been able to confirm is that speech sounds are organized in the brain according to the physical actions and where they take place in the vocal tract. So there are tongue twisters that tend to make us mess up in similar consonant sounds and tongue twisters that tend to make us mess up vowel sounds. Let's talk about the immortal tongue twister, Toy Boat. Go ahead and try it first, three times fast. Toy Boat, Toy Boat, Toy Boat. All right, this one's easier. Toy Boat, Toy Boat, Toy Boat. Toy Boat, Toy Boat, Toy Boat. Ten times fast. Toy Boat, Toy Boat, Toy Boat, Toy Boat, Toy Boat, Toy Boat, Toy Boat. To help explain this one, I'm gonna pull up a quadrilateral. You may have seen me bring up the vowel space in a previous video. It's basically a person facing to the left like this. We're in a cross section. The front of the mouth is over here. Back of the mouth is over here. It's a map of the inside of your mouth and it lets us be really precise about the exact shape and position of the tongue inside the mouth for a given vowel sound. So both of these vowel sounds in the words toy and boat, in most accents of English, they're diphthongs. They start in one spot and they move to another. So we can draw them on the vowel chart. In my accent, oi starts way back here, o, and moves forwards and up, e. So the whole thing goes, oi. 
It's a big old journey. O is a much smaller journey, but it is kind of similar in that it also starts way in the back. Uh, and then it's going to move up and forwards. Ooh. Obviously, this comes in a million different flavors, different accents. Let's just stick with mine for now. Oh. Now, you see how these are parallel? They have a very similar movement pattern. The lips, however, are starting from very rounded in oi, and then going unrounded. And they're doing the opposite of that in o, oh, in that vowel in both. They're starting off not very rounded, and they're moving into lip rounding. Oh. So it's a coordination problem again. You're moving your tongue in a really similar way from back to front and up a little for both of them, but you're having to move your lips in opposition to that. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. So you very quickly get confused. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. I mentioned, by the way, that the O vowel sound, what we call the goat vowel, has a lot of different varieties and different accents of English. If we were to take a kind of a, an estuary English accent, for instance, and I had a vowel sound something like O, Boat. that's going to look like this. It's going to start back here, a little lower. O, and it moves more than mine did, and it moves, but it still moves up and forward. It's still moving up and forward in that general direction and moving from less lip rounding to more lip rounding. And same is true, even more broadly true, from further back to further front, if I'm, say, doing a broad Australian accent, I... Toy boat. Here are some more people doing toy boat. Toy boat, 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 toy boat. Some tongue twisters are going to be harder for native speakers of some accents than others. Let's take the fast thief flash fried thick fish. The fast thief flash fried thick fish, the fast thief flash fried thick fish, the fast thief flash fried thick fish. The fast thief flash fried thick fish. The fast thief flash fried thick fish. This has got F, which is a labiodental sound, lip and teeth, and TH sounds. So the tongue tip coming to the back of the front teeth, or maybe even in between the teeth, like that. Thick. The fast thief fr flash fried thick fish. The fast thief flash fried thick fish. So if we're gonna alternate back and forth between them, then we have to go the fast thief flash fried thick fish. Now, if you're a speaker of an accent that fronts TH sounds, meaning instead of using your tongue tip and the teeth, you use something more to the front of the vocal tract, like your lip going to your teeth like this. So a word like thief, you'd be inclined to use thief. 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 That too is going to be a tricky coordination exercise. The fast thief flash fried thick fish. The fast thief flash fried thick fish. The fast thief flash fried thick fish. The fast thief flash fried fish thick. <laughs> <laughs> Next tongue twister, truly rural, purely plural. Well, this is going to be hard for just about anybody. Truly rural, purely plural. Truly rural, <laughs> truly rural, purely plural. Truly rural, purely plural. Truly rural, purely plur plural. But it's probably going to be harder for Americans than it is for other non-North American speakers of English. Truly rural, purely plural. Truly rural, pur purely plural. Truly rural, purely. Plural. Oh, gosh. That's hard to do. One reason, of course, is that there's just an extra R in it. If you're a non rhotic speaker, then purely doesn't have an R sound in it at all. Truly rural, purely plural. If you're a rhotic speaker, purely, it's got one extra R that's one extra R to mess up on. Truly rural, purely plural. <laughs> the other reason, though, is that American molar R, er, is particularly weird. I've talked about it before. The weirdest thing is that the sides of the tongue are sort of coming up. You can imagine kind of if I'm a tongue and I'm raising my shoulders, the sides of those tongue will come up and they'll make contact with the upper teeth, the molars and the bicuspids on either side. You can have a really strong version of that where they come all the way up inside and even press out against the sides of the upper teeth. Here's an ultrasound of someone making an American molar R. 
Round and round the rugged rocks, the ragged rascal ran. Now, this is exacerbated because Americans also tend to use a lot of back of tongue bunching on L sounds. So that's the back of the tongue coming up and back like this. But again, kind of squishing back into itself, maybe in a sort of a similar way to the way it's doing with R up in here. Truly rural, purely, purely plural. So here's a silly sentence that I just wrote. Bossy Tommy Shaw often called on lots of tall, honest law officers and constables to do all kinds of awful, horrible, profitless jobs. Bossy Tommy Shaw often called on lots of tall, honest law officers and constables to do all kinds of awful, horrible, profitless jobs. So that's not necessarily a tongue twister for me, an American. There are a few shades of different vowels in there, but it's not necessarily going to trip me up. But this is going to be a nightmare for a uh, Brit, an Australian, a South African, basically any non-North American who's trying to do an American accent because there are pattern shifts all over the place. The patterns of the vowels are different. Bossy Tommy Shaw often called on lots of tall, honest law officers often called on lots of tall, honest law officers and constables to do all kind of awful, horrible, profitless jobs. For me, the vowel sounds in bossy, 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 and Tommy, 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 are close, but they're not the same. Bossy, Tommy, bossy, Tommy, bossy, Tommy. Whereas if I'm saying RP speaker, bossy, Tommy, they're both going to be about here. Bossy, Tommy, bossy, Tommy, bossy, Tommy. Conversely, the sounds in, for me, Shaw and often are the same. They're right about here. Shaw often, Shaw often, Shaw often. Whereas if I'm a Brit, then that might be Shaw and often. They're different. Sure often. Sure often. Sure often. So that's really going to make your brain explode. So I wrote this sentence as practice for coordinating difficult vowel sounds in an American accent for actors who aren't Americans. Bossy Tommy Shaw often called on lots of tall on this law off law law. Okay, next tongue twister. If you're an American, try this in your best RP. All I want is a proper cup of coffee made from a proper copper coffee pot. Tin coffee pots and iron coffee pots, they're no use to me. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee made from a proper copper coffee pot, I'd rather have a cup of tea. All I want is a proper cup of coffee made from a proper cof copper coffee pot. <laughs> Tin coffee pots and iron coffee pots, they're no use to me. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee made from a proper copper coffee pot, I'd rather have a cup of tea. <laughs> oh my God. For me, all uses a vowel sound up here, and coffee uses pretty much that same vowel sound, whereas proper and pot are gonna use a vowel sound down here. They're close, but they're not the same. We have a different pattern, though, in RP. So all is gonna be up here, whereas coffee, proper, and pot are all gonna be down here. So it's pattern shifts that make that one really devilishly tricky, but also really good practice. All, all, all proper, proper, proper coffee, 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 pot, pot, pot. <laughs> In 2013, some researchers at MIT came up with what they claimed was the hardest tongue twister in the English language. And this tongue twister was so hard that apparently none of the test subjects could even get through it. The tongue twister is as follows. Pad kid poured curd pulled cod. 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 What does that mean? Pad kid poured curd pulled cod. Pad kid poured curd curd pulled cod. Pad kid poured curd pulled cod. Cod cod. So let's look at the first and last consonants of each word first. Each word ends in a d sound, which is a tongue tip sound, like this. And they alternate. They go back and forth. They're beginning consonants between p for the lips and k for the back of the tongue. So we have a lip sound, p, a tip of the tongue sound, d, and a back of the tongue sound, k. And they're all stops. They're all the same kind of obstruction of airflow. If we say them all together, but just the consonant sounds that begin and end each word, we get pud, could, pud, could, pud, could. Very even pattern. Pud, could, pud, could, pud, could. Let's look at the vowel sounds now. So these go a, e, or, er, u, ah. We're kind of going all over the whole vowel space here. They're all different. We're not repeating any of them. 
So maybe that's what's hard about it, is that we're going back to the same pattern over and over and over again with the consonants, put, could, put, could, put, could, whereas we're varying each of the vowels and we never come back to the same one. So the combination of similar and different could trip you up, I guess. Try it for yourself, see what you think. Pad kid pulled cord, pulled cord. Pad kid poured, curled, curd pulled cod. Pad kid pulled cord, poured cod. Pad kid poured cod, poured kid. <laughs> Pad kid poured curd pulled cod. Pad kid poured. <laughs> I've said it before. Speech is one of the most physically complex things we do as human being, and of course, it's physically complex and it's complex in terms of brain planning and coordination. So that's the intersection that makes tongue twisters so fascinating and difficult and fun. Next time you do some tongue twisters, maybe just pay attention to what those physical actions are. And if you want to try to pattern them, you can pattern the physical actions after each other and get better and better at coordinating them. <laughs>